Hey everyone, it's 10 Types, and today I'm going to be ranking every deck in the Pokemon TCG, or at least the top decks that people actually play, based on how good they are for grinding the ladder in Pokemon TCG Live, specifically the rank ladder, and improving your rank. Yes, you do want to um, also get rewards and like play games and stuff, but um, if you want to advance up the rank ladder, there are certain things you want to do and certain things you don't want to do, other than just playing the best deck. Of course, just play the deck you want to play, right? Let's be honest, that's... Uh, the the simple solution but there are decks that you might enjoy that just aren't very good at all which you can't really climb the rank ladder at all and then there are decks that aren't that good by the way i'm using uh, the tealers creator here on trainer hill which does have one uh, based on the play limitless deck so that's what i'm going off here i think it was the 50 most played decks plus dialga matang and future hands uh, some of the deck names are kind of weird but that's fine. So, um, what are you looking for in a deck that's good for grinding ladder? First of all, you want it to obviously be good, right? Um, if a deck's bad, then you're just going to lose all your games, and you're not going to go up. Uh, if it's, like, mediocre, you'll lose some games and win some games and kind of slowly go up. And then if it's a, a good deck and you're, like, winning all your games, then you're just going up the ladder. However, it's not just what's, like, good at the highest level of competitive play either, because... Let's be honest, uh, everyone makes mistakes, we, you make mistakes, I make mistakes, and so these aren't necessarily optimized play um, at all, right? Your opponent's not going to be playing optimally, you're not going to be playing optimally, so take that into consideration. You want decks that are easy for you to play with, especially if you're a newer player, you want to be able to pick up a deck and grind up the ladder, and then um, just see better opponents. That's what I like to usually grind up the ladder before I make videos on decks, because um, I want to be playing against opponents who are pretty good, but then um, also the latter, I will say, does um, get you more points from winning than losing. So if you are playing a deck that's going even, uh, you know, winning half your games, then you will be moving up, but not that quickly. And also you want a deck that's kind of complicated for your opponent to play against. Um, there's some amount, like if you play a deck that's kind of annoying, your opponent might quit. In my experience, this doesn't happen that often. People do quit sometimes, but usually only once they've lost um, or they're losing. So, um, for example, Snorlax is a deck that people don't like playing against, but um, people don't just quit all the time. It happens very occasionally, but to me, not to the point where uh, that's why you should play that deck. Um, but anyway, let's just hop in. Let's go in order. First of all, your Virtue Draco box. Uh, box, if you don't know, means it's sort of a toolbox, meaning you have a toolbox of different attackers. Um, and so you have a bunch of different attackers, or I guess... You have Reggie Draco, but then it's copying different attacks. And so this is a bit a little bit complicated. It's not that complicated to play, though, and it's a very solid deck right now. Um, certainly a deck that um, next can struggle to beat. But also, in my experience, it's kind of hard to play. I'm not very good with it. Maybe it's just a deck I'm not good with that other people are good with. But um, I find it hard to close out games. It's also relatively straightforward to play against i mean you you do have spread options for Reggie draco but um they're they're okay they're not like insane unlike some other decks like you don't really have anything on the level of raiding grinja you have kiram which is insane but also like you discard all your energy so then um you need to like restart and then you also have you know, dragapult which is good obviously dragapults if you play the deck it's really the main attacking option but also it's not like some insane level of spread where you're wiping out all your opponents' Pokemon, or really, you're probably only knocking out one Pokemon, maybe a second one across two turns or something like that. But it's a solid deck uh, for Grand Ladder. I'll put it in B tier. It, nothing wrong with it. It's a little difficult to play, but not like super hard, and um, it's not that hard to play against, but it's a good deck as well. Then we have Gardevoir. Uh, Gardevoir is also a pretty good deck. It's kind of slow. Also, you do want decks that are faster, I guess. It's not that big of a deal in my experience, but. Um, yeah, Gardevoir is going to go in B tier as well. It's also a bit of a toolbox deck, but not, it's not like exactly a toolbox deck. You really have Drifloon and your main attacker is, is pretty obvious depending on the circumstances. There can be some complicated things. You also, as I said, you are a slower deck. There are certain decks that can kind of just outspeed you and then you can't really do anything to recover. Uh, it has some difficult things to do. It's also a difficult deck to play against, so that's nice. It's not like the hardest deck in the game to play against, but um, definitely you're attacking with a single prize, so you have a multi prize on the bench. You have lots of different pieces that are doing different things, and so it's difficult for your opponent to know what to go after. And um, so I still think that's pretty nice, but um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nothing too special. 
honestly, like the top decks are usually like fine to grind the ladder with. It's what most people are playing. They'll play a lot of uh, mirror matches, which aren't really helpful. I mean, they're fine. There certainly can be interesting games, but also to try to get to the top of the ladder, it's it's not necessarily the best thing. Charizard Pidgeot just kind of checked in the same. I'm going to put an A tier, actually. I find Charizard Pidgeot really hard to play against. It's probably the best deck in the game right now. There are so many different things it can do. Uh, it's certainly a harder deck to play with, but um, even if you're not that good with it, your opponent's going to be expecting that you're going to be able to make some insane plays, so they're going to play kind of scared, which is always nice for, for you if your opponent's playing scared, because then they're probably going to play worse. But Charizard Pidgeot is, is certainly a very good deck, and I'll put in A tier. I might be put down to B tier at the end. We'll see. Next we have, I'm going to talk about Raging Bolt Ogre Pond as well. No, no, I'll just, no, I'll go in order. Lugia Archaeops is fine as well. B tier. It's definitely a deck I don't like playing against um, because it's kind of hit or miss. I don't like playing with it either, to be honest. But Lugia Archaeops is a certainly, certainly it's a pretty solid deck because um, you have a single price attacking option. I'd say it's pretty similar to Gardevoir, honestly. There are a lot of, there are differences certainly, but um, in terms of playing against it, it feels kind of similar to Gardevoir, except... You know, Archaeops is kind of like Gardevoir, but um, they can't get Archaeops back. But um, yeah, I think Lugia Archaeops is, is fine to grind the ladder with. A Jubal Ogre Pond is really good to grind the ladder with. Uh, I don't think it's that good of a deck. I honestly beat it most of the time I play against it, but it's also, it's probably this number one deck I see in the ladder. Maybe not now, but for, for once it, uh, for a while since it came out, it was the top deck. So a Jubal Ogre Pond. It's pretty straightforward. You just do big damage. You don't need to think too much. Admittedly, it's one of the easier decks to play against, but it's also one of the easier ones to play with. Your games are pretty fast. You generally know who will win within the first few turns. Uh, and your opponent also, this is one of the decks where your opponent might concede early um, because they think they're going to lose even if they're not. So that's good for this deck. Um, you just do big damage and you do it quickly. And um, it's, it's straightforward. It's not the easiest deck in the game to play, but it's pretty easy. It, it's certainly up there. And um, this is a big damage, um, big HP as well for, for a basic Pokemon, so it's pretty nice. Then we have Lost Zone Box. Lost Zone Box, uh, this is the first, oh, I guess, Ranger Bolt Ogre Pond. A few of these decks lose to certain attacks, but Lost Zone Box, there's a new Kiram. I'm going to put it in C tier. Um, it's not like the worst deck to play. It, it's certainly an okay deck, but it's not the best for ladder. It's kind of hard to play. I think people over exaggerate how hard it is to play, like, you know, if you lost on the wrong card once or twice throughout the course of the game, it's you're not going to, like, lose because of that. I mean, you could. It could be the thing that makes the difference. Uh, and it depends exactly what it is, right? But, like, obviously don't lost on your text for the matchup. And there are certain things you can't avoid. And there's a amount of luck to it as well. But um, it's certainly, it, is, it is a harder deck to play if you lost on the wrong thing um, a lot. If you're not, like, entirely sure what you're doing with the deck, it's probably going to end pretty badly for you. And um, even if you are sure, as I said, there is an element of luck, which you can't really control, even more so than other decks, I think, um, at least with bad loss zoning. So it feels bad. You don't want decks that feel bad to play with either. But loss zone is um, certainly a pretty, it's a pretty good deck, but definitely one that's hard to play and not what I recommend for ladder. I will move Charizard Pidgeot down, so I decided uh, it, it's a good deck, but um, it's kind of hard to play with specifically. That's why I'm moving it down. Then we have Snorlax, which is... Um, I don't know. I need to make it. I almost want to make another video talking about stall versus control versus. Um, I think it, it's really it's a trapping deck, but um, anyways, it, it, it's kind of a control deck. So I, this is going in eight here. If you know anything about um, the ladder, you know that Snorlax is. Well, I don't know. Not everyone knows this, but Snorlax is very good in the ladder. Um, in my experience, it's the second best laddering deck. It was my the best laddering deck before Pekron EX and Dustnoir came out. Dustlops, Dustnoir because it um it struggles against those cards but despite that it's still very good a lot of people don't know how to play against it and it it is one of the decks that annoys people it's probably the deck that annoys people the most it's certainly up there and um it's 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 very good as well um specifically when people talk about tournaments it can tie which is a reason why it could have issues but also um it's uh that can't happen on ladder right oh it, I, I, you can time out, but you can't tie, um, at least not from, from timing out. So Snorlax is, um, is pretty good, right? Because you have, uh, a weird win condition, uh, people don't, so people don't know how to play against it. And then also, um, in addition to being good, it's pretty easy to play. It's not like the easiest deck in the game either, but 
um, after a few games with it, I'd say like five or so, you'll get the hang of it. Um, I'd say your first few games playing with it, you might be very confused. You need to play Stronglass to get Pokemon trapped in the active. You need to know certain matchups as well. Um, and certainly uh, in past formats, it was like super easy. You do the same thing every matchup, but now it's not like that. You need to kind of know the matchups, but it's not like it's the end of the world if you don't, because your opponent probably doesn't either. So you can kind of stumble through it and you'll both stumble through it. But if you know the matchups, then, you know, it, you need to play against Snorlax so differently than every other deck in the game, or almost every other deck in the game. So, so it's really good for Grinding Ladder. Um, definitely not the most fun deck to play against, but I, I'm going to be honest, it, it's really good for, for Grinding Ladder. It was the deck I used to get um, to, Ma uh, to Arceus League, I think, last ladder, and it was so good. I, I won almost all my games. Uh, right now, it is kind of hard to play against better players, but it's still pretty good. Um, and then we got Champ Power Excalibur. I'm going to put this one in C tier as well. Um, now I could put it, I'll put it in B tier. I think it's not that good of a deck, to be honest, but also, like, it's fine for Grinding Ladder. You got big damage. You got uh, a spread threat, which can cause your opponent to misplay. And so, Champ Power Excalibur. Also, the spread threat does mean if your opponent doesn't play Manaphy, that's really good. Uh, and there are people who just don't play Manaphy. That's just something that some people do on the ladder specifically. So, uh, Jupiter of Excalibur is definitely going to be a deck that is something that uh, they can get wins. It's nothing too crazy. I, I do think it's not particularly strong, but also as a ladder deck, it's fine. Next we have Dragapult. Dragapult, I'll put in the... Um, uh, it's not as good as a lot of these decks. I mean, it's an okay deck. It's it's a, like a top 10 deck, probably. But also in the current metagame, it's like kind of iffy. I, I don't know where... I'm going to group in Dragapult Charizard with Charizard Pidgeot, because that's kind of, they're pretty similar. Uh, but Dragapult, I'm going to put in C tier, honestly. Um, it's a little awkward to play. It has consistency issues in the early game, um, and you can just, like, not set up. And so that that's a big issue. You're definitely going to have games where you just don't set up or don't set up fast enough, and you're just going to lose. You also need to know how to, therefore, come back into games pretty much all the time. So that's something kind of hard to do if your deck's not, like, completely built for that like snorlax which is i mean it's not really a comeback so Snorlax. it's something very different so uh dragapult isn't the best ladder deck in my opinion i could see putting in b tier i might bump it up there it's not like no i'll put in b tier it's not the hardest deck to play but it's not great the tiers are like kind of ordered by the way but um yeah dragapult is definitely a deck that um isn't one i'd super recommend but if you like it just just definitely play it it's one you can grind ladder with then we have maridon i think maridon is a super forgettable deck i made my top 10 list i literally forgot maridon existed i'm gonna be completely honest um maridon is an okay ladder grinding deck it's it's kind of similar to rageable ogre pond and chimpow excalibur with your big basic attacker it certainly has different elements and is it's really the safe deck i'm gonna actually put in a tier uh, i see it actually a decent no i'll put it in b tier it's pretty good for ladder grinding though uh it's one you just um and just play it. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, not too much to think about. Uh, with the Iron Hands, it actually becomes a little more complicated. And I will talk about Future Hands now as well. Future Hands, I guess, is A tier. I haven't seen this deck in forever, but it's it, for a while it was the best ladder grinding deck. Uh, you focused around just a few attackers, or really one attacker, Iron Hands EX. That attacker is a um, it's a good attacker, right? Because it um, it can really deal with not every threat, not the stage two threats, but a lot of other threats. Maybe it's not so good now. I'll bump it down to B tier. Uh, I'm interested in hearing people's thoughts on this deck because um, if you play it or play against it, like, I don't know, it's not very good in the like meta game right now. It's not going to be beating Charizard or Reggie Draco, but um, it's, it's still pretty solid. There are a lot of decks that can't really handle the speed of uh, future hands. Uh, I don't know if speed's the right term, but they're like speed slash consistency um, with taking multiple prizes if your opponent's playing like weird random decks. So future hands is definitely kind of hard to deal with. I don't know. Brian on future hands is pretty similar. Um, definitely weaker than Raging Bull, Ogre Pond, or Snorlax stall, though. So um, yeah, that's why they're lower, to be honest. Then we have Ancient Box here. Ancient Box, in my opinion, is not a good deck to grind the ladder. I don't think this deck's very good, uh, but more importantly, it takes a really long time. It's the only true single prize deck. Lost Zone is like also a single prize deck, but Ancient Box, it seems like we have really long games that come down to the wire, which is something that is honestly, I don't know if taxing is 
like an over exaggeration but i'm going to say it's kind of taxing it's kind of feels taxing to play against this deck if i play against it a bunch of times in a row because there's a lot of stuff you gotta like push hard to get to come back in the late game because you struggled in the early game and so you need to it almost feels like you need to get lucky um engine box is just a in my opinion a pretty mediocre deck because its damage output is is okay its hp is it's a single prize so it's kind of low it's low for a uh, pokemon high for a single prizer but then um yeah just can struggle it's not that good and um there's quite frankly just better decks to play than ancient box right now i know there are people who love ancient box but um i don't think it's a very good ladder grinding deck then we have iron thorns uh, iron thorns is the best ladder grinding deck right it's uh it's a deck that really counters the, the meta game. Uh, if you look at this tier list, it, it doesn't counter, like, uh, Maridon or Future. I mean, it kind of counters Maridon, but it doesn't counter Future Hands at all. It's a dump that could against Maridon. Um, but it does beat, like, the top meta decks, which are, like, Charizard, Rizzi Draco, Gardevoir, and Snorlax. So they're, they're the big four um, that are definitely the best decks. And um, Regional Ogre Pond sees a ton of play. Dragapult sees a decent amount of play. And you're able to beat the, uh, maybe not Dragapult, but Dragapult to me doesn't see a ton of play. Um, and if it does, it's often paired with Charizard and Pidgeot. And then it's really hard to get Dragapult up without Charizard and Pidgeot. So Iron Thorns is able to beat those decks. It's very easy to play as well. It's definitely the easiest deck in the game to play because you have um, one attacker. Because Iron Thorns, you just stick it in the active, just attack. By the way, don't put other Pokemon in. It's just going to end up complicating things in a way you don't want. But, um... Yeah, I mean, you just attack over and over again, and then, and then you'll win, right? It's it's a pretty sim simple, straightforward deck to play, and um, not much. Can, I mean, things can kind of go wrong. Gardevoir isn't actually that good of a matchup. It's a little complicated, but most of the matchups are pretty simple. You don't need to think very much, so you can just cruise and win a lot of games with Iron Thorns. It's not the best deck in the game, but it's probably a top 10 deck, and... Uh, oh, wait, Dragapult Charizard is another deck. I didn't realize that. Okay, um, so... Yeah, Iron Thorns is it's, it's the best um, ladder grinding deck, though, right now, unfortunately. So we have Dragapult Charizard next. This deck, I actually thought was one of these other. I thought it was included in here. I, I forgot it got its own deck. Um, So so it's obviously going right next to Charizard Pidgeot. It, it's similar. It has less consistency. Actually, no, it'll go like... I mean, it's still the same tier. It's definitely lower. It's like worse than some of these other decks. I'm going to move down Dragapult as well. Now, I'll keep it here. But Dragapult Charizard, um, mixture of Dragapult and Charizard, but it has less consistency, more versatility, but that means it's harder to play, which means that it's probably a worse ladder deck just to grind because it's more complicated. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd recommend playing Charizard Pidgeot over it, especially playing the Dust Noir line, which is what you probably are playing it now. Actually, Pidgeot Control. Pidgeot Control is super bad for grinding the ladder. Um, probably, certainly for the average players, are really bad. It's really hard to play. It's a deck I like, and I have grinded the ladder some with it, but it's still hard. It's like, when I said Angel Box is taxing, this deck is brutal. You have these really long games. Every turn is, like, super complicated, usually. Um, your opponent will have no idea what's going on, but you probably won't either. I mean, if you play Control, obviously, then it might be fair to grind the ladder with it, but... You'll have long games. It's not like that. I mean, it's, it's a solid deck. It's like a top 10 deck right now, but you really need to be good with the deck. It's not um, it's not at all a simple deck to play, but um, it's a, I, I don't know. It, it's really hard, right? Um, I don't I don't think there's any deck in the game that's harder to play than it. I don't know. Someone tell me down below if there's a deck that's harder. That's like on this list or that actually sees play. But um, yeah, you, you have a lot of decisions to make. Um, there are a lot of decisions early on in the game that can really impact things later in the game. That's true for any deck, but um, they're hard to see in Pidgeot Control. And uh, maybe, I I'm not actually sure if that's true, but Pidgeot Control, um, really long games, really intense games, which can be really fun, right? Pidgeot Control is a deck that honestly is fun to play with, and it's like kind of stressful to play against because it can, like, if things go badly and you lose, then it's probably going to be not fun. It's going to be a long, drawn out game. But if you. It can be intense, and it can be close back and forth, um, and end up with a lot of really interesting plays. But also, that's not what you want if you're... That's not what you want every game. That's what you want every once in a while. Um, once you're content with your lineup position, this is the deck you play, but not not when you're trying to grind up to a certain uh, rank. Then we have Turbo Roaring Moon. I, I actually didn't realize this deck was on the list. 
Um, this deck is like fine. I guess it's A tier. No, I guess it's I guess it's B tier. It's pretty similar to Raging Bull Ogre Pond. I mean, I'd say just play Raging Bull Ogre Pond over it. It's better in pretty much every way. Um, it's not like an amazing deck, but um, it's a solid deck. Uh, Raging Bull Ogre Pond, Turbo Roaring Moon, same thing. But um, Raging Bull Ogre Pond is going to be one shotting everything probably. And um, you have a draw. Well, I guess it's the same supporter, but you. You need either Dark Patch or Energy Switch for Turbo Boring Moon, which obviously that's an item card, an extra card, so you know you might have some issues there. And then the last deck, but yeah, no, the, the Turbo decks are like pretty good to like run ladder with, but the one I recommend, which most people play, is Raging Bull Ogre Pond. Then the last deck here is Dalgon Matang. This deck's like kind of bad to run the ladder, let's be honest. It's like not a very good deck. I know there's some people who are massive fans of the deck, but it's not that good, um, not that consistent, and uh. You never know what's going to happen until, like, the last turn of the game either. You don't know if you're going to win or lose, so it's on a game, or it's on a deck where the games are ever going to end early, which can be nice, um, and something you'll essentially never have. So, yeah, Dialing Matang is not that good. It's not, like, a terrible deck, but it's also, it's a, it's a pretty terrible deck for ladder grinding. But anyway, here's my ladder tier list. Tell me if you think I misplaced anything on here, or if there are any decks that you grind ladder with that you think I should include, um, that I should have included. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell, as well as joining the channel. Also, shout-outs to uh, new YouTube member Formonic. Huge shout-outs for joining the channel. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, and as always, I'm excited to see you in the next video.